Dave, just going back to Tuesday, a, th a third successive win this month with your side coming from behind to take the three points. Does winning in that fashion and overcoming that initial adversity bring another level of satisfaction to that result? Um, I, I don't think it was more, more satisfaction. Also, we wanted to win the game. We knew it was an important game for us. <clears throat> and despite a, a, a poor first half performance, we, we've managed to, to turn the game round. Um, I think over the course of the season, you don't want to be required to do that an awful lot. It's something that um, the reverse happened for us earlier in the season. We took the lead and, and, and gave games away, if you like. So, again, to be able to do that and, and as you say, had a third win was, was massively, massively important. I'm sure you want Paddy back as much as the next person, but you must be pleased with how the side have dealt with his absence. And I guess it highlights the work done by the club behind the scenes going into that January transfer window. Yeah, not just January. Like I, I think if you look at where we are, and I've said this, we look at where we are injury-wise with Maka being out, Fraser being out, Sauce being out, Paddy being out, the four hugely important players. Um, and I think we've managed to, to cope with the, the strength and depth of, of the squad. Um, they're, apart from Maka, obviously, they're all not too far away from a return and that undoubtedly will make us, make us stronger. Um, and... We're going to need everybody and we're going to need our best players um, to hopefully give us a good end to the, to the season and those three especially uh, will play an integral part in that. Well, Tuesday's result keeps us in those playoff places but you've mentioned in the past that you look at games in blocks of 10. With that, how much attention are you and your staff paying to the league table at this minute? I think that's something we've spoken about that it's important not to get too carried away with. Um, because of the nature of the league table and the, and the tightness of the league table, I think we have to accept that, um, that there could be a scenario where you win some games, you move up six places, you lose some games, you move down six places. Um, you could, um, by drawing two games, be 12th in the, in the table, but still on the brink of those playoff places. So I think, as I said, we have to be judged over 46 games. We know that there'll be a, a, a definitive points total that we want to get to, that we think might leave us in certain positions in, in that table. Um, with the challenge for us now is over these, these last 16 games is to be able to, to produce that. And in the main, it doesn't matter who and where you, you, get those, you get those points. Obviously, it has an impact in, in games where you play teams that are in and around you. But fundamentally, that doesn't play a, a, a great significance if um, we lose the games against the teams that are around us, but we win every other game, we'll still end up with a points total that hopefully will leave us where we want to be at the end of the season. Looking ahead to Saturday, another test as we take on second place Stevenage. Is there added impetus during the week when you know you're facing a promotion rival? Not from um, uh, certainly our point of view. Um, I think on the back of um, a Tuesday fixture, things take care of themselves, really. Players will know the importance of the, of the game and, and the potential impact they could have. Our job is to, again, try and reel in the teams that are um, far away or in the distance from us at, at the moment. And, and Stephen and Jarl, that started the season unbelievably well, um, are deservedly in the, the position that, that they were in. Um, I've, I wouldn't say dropped off recently, but I've had some, I suppose, the same thing of draws, really. I think they've drawn the last six away games um, when, at the time, you thought that um, they were in the pole position to, to sort of take over late and orient at the, at the top. But they're, like I say, still in a really, really strong position. They'll be looking to, like I say, continue their run um, and make sure they take one of those automatic spots, what a place that they've, like I say, they've occupied since the start of the season. Well, they're a side that lead the way in terms of late goals, which we all know too well. I believe around 30% of the goals a season have come in the last 10 minutes. Does that provide a unique challenge in terms of when you might look to change things around on the day? Not really. Um, I, guess I, I think sometimes you can, you can look into things. Ultimately, a game's played over the way it is now, closer to 100 minutes than 90 minutes, uh, and you, you have to keep going. I think most teams um, do that. Um, I think, the, the, I suppose, the... the difference and the, the, the significance of them is that they'll continue to pose questions regardless of the state of the game and the timing of, of the game. Um, I'm sure from their side of things they'd love to score a whole load of goals at the start of the game and it becomes a different game then. Um, regardless of who you're playing against, like you say, you've got to keep going right till, right till the end. Um, we don't need reminding. Like I say, we, we 
we went down there and produced a, an OK performance that had us in front um, and the game changes on a, on a penalty and a sending off and we come away with nothing from the game. So our players certainly don't need a reminding of, of that fact and we obviously want to try and produce a performance tomorrow that can get us three points um, and keep us on, the, on their tails, if you like, and close that gap a little bit. What do you think the sides learned or how have they grown since that game at the Lamex? Um I wouldn't say we've learned loads. I think we've we've learned bits about the league and, and become accustomed to that. I think what what we were very early on is we were punished for poor mistakes from our perspective, um, which, which cost us. And we have over the the I suppose really since game five or six. Really, we've cut out those individual mistakes. We've got the basics right. I still think there's plenty to plenty to come from us. I still like I say without going into too much detail, there are areas that we think we can get significantly better um, and we still have to try and do that whilst picking up picking up results. Um, we, again, if, if there's a criticism of where we were at the start, we maybe we, we had players that hadn't um, played the, or played significant amount of games at the, at the level. Um, they're all 30 games better off now in terms of that experience um, and that's proved really, really um, worthwhile and, and, and will be vital now um, between now and the end of the season. It was good to see Fraser back out there on the training pitch this week. And how's his recovery going? Are any others close to making a return? His recovery has gone really well, touch wood, um, and hopefully he can be back involved very, very soon. Um, like I say, he's had a couple of, couple of grass sessions, no, no ill effects. His, 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 his rehab couldn't have gone any better, really, and he's bang on schedule for where, where we thought he'd be. Um, again, similarly, uh, Sars and Paddy have been back on the back on the grass today. Probably a little bit behind, but certainly I'd expect them back in the fold within the next week or so. Um, and, and like I said right at the very start, to have those three um, back available for us will undoubtedly make us stronger, um, and they'll play a big part in what we what, what and if we achieve um, between now and May. Well, we're expecting another full house tomorrow. As a manager, how does that make you feel? Is it must give you a sense of pride in that, you know, people are enjoying what they're seeing out there and are keen to be a part of this journey. It, listen, it's been great. I think we've been spoiled a little bit in the fact that um, maybe full houses at, at Edgeley um, were something that happened once every so often, um, and, and we've got to a point now where um, they happen more often than more often than not. Um, which, which is brilliant, oh, the support we've had has been fantastic. That comes from a, a lot of things. Yeah, it comes from success on the pitch, but it comes from, I suppose, the work that's been done off the pitch in terms of the ground, the money that's been spent there, the investment in, the match they experience. Um, and I suppose supporters um, always want to be part of, of something special. Um, and like, like it was the, the same last year, we, we've built a little bit of optimism, ambition. Um, the club is undoubtedly on the, on, the, on the way up, regardless of what happens tomorrow or in the next few months. Um, and that's something that everyone wants to be associated with. So it, it's great, it's, it's brilliant for us as a, as a playing group and a management group um, to turn up week in, week out, especially at home, and there'll be 10,000 people there, especially with, with away fans as well. It, it creates a brilliant atmosphere um, and certainly helps us, um, I think, what they have done especially well is recognised when, when we've needed them. I think sometimes it's very easy with big football clubs that have a, um, a past of achievement above the level they're currently at to become frustrated and expect that um, people should maybe roll over and that we should be, we should be dominating. That's not the case. I think they've, they've been brilliant at that. Um, and I hope we don't need them tomorrow, but I'm sure that if we do, they'll be there giving us their 100% backing. Dave, thanks for your time and all the best tomorrow. Cheers, thank you.